Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we're back in War Thunder and with update 1.73 came the French tech tree and I think the way I'm going to approach it is I'm going to try and do a review for each of the bombers in the tech tree and then maybe some more general reviews about some of the aircraft and then maybe some about the premium so look forward to that in the future. Now, that means that we're going to start with the MB-174A-3. This is a rank 2 battle rating 2.7 bomber in the French tree. It, you'll find it after the Potes 633. It's the first rank 2 frontline bomber that you get for the French. And after this, you also get the Leo 451 early. Now, the way I would describe the MB-174 is that it fills a very similar role to one of the British premiums, the Hudson Mark V. The difference is the Hudson is battle rating 2.0 and actually has a better bomb load than the MB-174. The MB-174 really struggles with its bomb load for something which is supposed to be mainly a bomber. If you look at the two options available to you, you end up with 58 uh, kilogram bombs so overall that's 25 kilos explosive mass per bomb so you're looking at about what is it uh, my mind is a blank 200 no that's wrong yes it is no that's right so 200 kilos of explosive mass and then you also are able to carry one 500 kilo now, even though it says 500 number 2, just understand the number 2 is the actual name of the bomb, not the amount of bombs you get. So you only actually get one 500, and the reason for this is because it doesn't fit in the bomb bay. It actually fits outside it. Now, the 500 is pretty good at taking out pretty much anything you want it to. It will generally do about half of the base's damage. It has 300 kilograms of explosive mass, and when the French get ground forces, I can see stuff like the MB-174 with this 500 kilo being annoying as hell uh, to fight against just because it will uh, bomb a point and you'll have to be sat on it and it's going to hit you pretty hard. But let's talk about it in terms of a realistic since that's where we are at at update 1.73 now. So as a frontline bomber the two bomb loads are pretty disappointing. After playing the NC 223, the F222, and also the Leo. The MB174 and also the Potes 633's bomb loads are incredibly underwhelming compared to those of the three machines. So you have to find a way to make it at least a little bit more useful, and there are definitely ways of doing that. The MB174 has a ton of defensive guns on it, two 7.5s on the top, and three. 7.5 millimeters in this little I suppose you would call it not really a static position but it's very much nearly static at the bottom of the fuselage. This means if anything comes directly behind you you will have five 7.5 millimeters which will be hit them and when you get the upgraded belts for the turrets the uh, APT rounds you actually get IT AP rounds which I think is probably the best 7.5 millimeter belt in the game uh, even when we look at normal offensive rounds. So running APT using the IT AP belts, you can do damage to engines, you can set stuff on fire, and generally you'll have a very good experience with the back gunner of this machine. You also have two 7.5mm on the wings, therefore you do have to worry about convergence because they are absolutely miles apart, and since the engines, the Gnome Roan 14 ends are so large, convergence becomes an even bigger issue. So overall, you have two guns looking forward, five guns looking back, but the five guns looking back are incredibly limited. Uh, let's say you want to approach this bomber, and you are trying to attack it. The way to uh, think about it is that bottom gun, the only time it will be able to hit you is if you're directly behind the tail. So you don't really have to worry about those three 7.5s as long as you stay away from the direct back of this aircraft. With the two 7.5s on the top where you actually see the gunner seated, it does have pretty good elevation on it above the machine, but obviously it can't shoot below the uh, aircraft. And at the same time, a good guide to use uh, is if you look at the tail itself as you're approaching it, basically the 7.5s on the top can go slightly over 
each of those. So you're looking at maybe a 45 degree angle either side, so it doesn't have great traverse. Therefore you can exploit that when going after it. This means going after it from the front, going at it from the side, from below is completely fine. The only place you really want to um, miss it from is directly above, because it will be able to shoot you down as you come down on it. Now, because of its substandard bomb load, one of the things which is actually kind of fun about the vehicle and does actually make it, in my opinion, worthwhile flying, is you can use it in a pseudo, uh, <laughs> I don't know how to describe this, but a insanity mode or like a, a confusion bomb, I think would be a way to put it. So there are a few aircraft in the game which play these pseudo light bomber roles, but what you end up doing is after dropping your bomb, you can start going after the enemy aircraft which are still climbing. The MB-174 is incredibly fast for what it is. Generally you can in a straight line hit 450 without even blinking and also because this thing has war emergency power 450 is fine and 350 while climbing you can easily get to about 5500 meters before you get to the bombing points on the general map that you will play. This means you will always be above the fighters who are climbing and put you in a unique position of after dropping your bomb of screwing with the enemy. <laughs> this basically means that if you were around when the Tiger Cat was released, the Tiger Cat was an absolute menace on the raw map, because what would happen is it got an air spawn of about 4,000, and it would just dive on Fokker Wolves on bf 109s while they were at about 2,000, 3,000 still trying to climb, and there's nothing they could do about it. The, the Tiger Cats had literally everything over them. Basically, how the Hornet is right now uh, in the first five minutes, five minutes of each of the games. The MB-174 is like that, but it's a lesser extent. It is actually, for a large machine, very maneuverable. The tail is uh, very responsive, apart from the rudders. Sometimes it can be quite hard to get guns on target in that respect, so you'll have to roll and use the elevator instead. But you can go after unwitting pilots who are trying to climb and trying to come uh, and attack the fighters that are coming after you and just creates this level of confusion. What is my general tactic with this machine is that I will spawn in on my side, climb at about a 5 or 10 degrees with web until I reach an enemy bombing point, drop the bomb so I kill about half of it and then turn off the web because otherwise my engines will die turn to the general position where normal fighters are climbing and dive on them. Now some of them will be paying attention, others won't, and you don't really have the firepower to kill them, but you can at least maim them, and as I said, create confusion. What you'll actually end up in is an aircraft which you're going 450-500 in, and you'll have about two or three fighters on you. Now, this may not sound great, but if you are diving away from them, it means that them getting guns on targets is a lot harder to do. This thing can dive to about 650 before it redlines. And from there, you can get to the ground. And by that time, hopefully, your team is able to get on those fighters who decided that you are the easy targets that they must go for. Now, sometimes this works. Other times, it won't work. It is a roll of the dice because unfortunately it's not up to you, it's up to the enemy team and how they react. But you can definitely help that scenario by being as annoying as possible on the way back to your base. Now at 2.7 you do sometimes run into some incredibly scary enemies in this aircraft. The P-47s, the fact that for some reason I've been running into them in this machine kind of uh, is a bit odd since they are 4.0 and 4.3 respectively but I suppose I've been running into the... I must have been running into the uh, Russian one which is at 3.7 and also the German one which is also at 3.7 so those two premium aircraft you do have to watch out for but you can actually outmaneuver them with this massive plane it seems like a lot of twin engine fighters and bombers have actually got a decent maneuverability uh, increase. So flying them around and fighting fighters is actually really fun to do, 
especially in a machine like this. Even though it doesn't have a lot of armor, it has a little bit on your pilot, and since your gunner is exposed, once he's knocked out, both of your sets of turrets do get knocked out at the same time, which is kind of sad. So you do have to watch out for that. The engines are massive, so any hits to them, you will spring oil and water, and it seems like with the fuel tanks, the fuel tanks do self-seal on this thing, and because they are kind of spread apart and there's so many different ones, generally it is quite hard to run out of fuel after you've been hitting them. But yeah, your engines after being hit will overheat and die incredibly quickly, so that is something to worry about. This isn't a plane which can just glide for a long time, it does seem quite heavy in that sense once your engine power has gone down. I mean each engine is around 900 horsepower or 1150 on takeoff, so with that you can understand if you take engine damage this thing is probably going to lose quite a lot of altitude pretty quickly. But if you are able to gain that energy advantage from that initial engagement with the enemy, you are also able to turn with some of the heavier aircraft that the enemy have on offer, such as the P-47s, you can really cause a ruckus in this thing and have a hell of a good time. If we're talking about it from a bombing point of view, no, it isn't a good pick. If you are deciding to go down the bomber route, the three main aircraft in rank uh, 1 and 2 that you should be focusing on is the Farman, the NC, and the Leo 451. The Potez and the MB-174 just miss them. But if you're looking for that weird, slightly bomber, slightly pseudo annoying role to try and confuse the enemy team and get them aggressed on you so your team can, uh, you know, basically clean up, this is the type of bomber that you will enjoy. So yeah, it's quite... I've enjoyed my time with this. When I first saw its stats, I was like, oh, it probably won't be that fun, especially with the bomb load that it is after playing the NC-223. But I think there is some potential in playing this thing and having a good laugh in it. If you're, be, if you're trying to be as efficient as possible and researching as fast as possible and you know, doing what you want to do and getting to those jets, you should miss this thing. Just stick with the heavier bombers, stick with the ones with the actual bombers that can do stuff. But if you maybe are in a squad and the three of them are running something like uh, the VG-33s or the D-520, this is a perfect setup plane for them in order to bring the enemy fighters down and then the VG and the D-520 at low altitudes can actually compete with stuff like C-202s and BF-109s. But yeah, if you like that kind of gameplay, or if you do mill around in a squadron and maybe you struggle with the setup of kills, maybe give this thing a go. But if you are looking for that efficiency, looking for an actual bomber, this ain't the right place. There are other French bombers that I will talk about in the future that are like that, but unfortunately, this is not one of them. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time.